All this is Dr. Mubin Sayed. So we are in the Cool Beans Cafe. Let's first look at the monkeypox. There is one case in the US already found. And there is an unusual outbreak in Europe. Then we'll do our chit chat. So this is drbean.com. Uh, there is a link in the description. Consider purchasing this plan. I think you would like it. Here is the news. First US monkeypox case identified hours after a CDC official expressed concern about unusual outbreak across Europe. Case of monkeypox has been confirmed in a man in Massachusetts. The man is hospitalized and in good condition and his case poses no risk to the public, according to the state officials. The case comes on the heels of reported monkeypox cluster in the UK, Portugal and Spain. So, let's see what is monkeypox. Interestingly, this virus with the monkeypox has only been observed twice, just in two cases. It has never been uh, easily isolated. So, this particular discussion where people come in and say, have you ever isolated SARS-CoV-2? Monkeypox is the one that has been a little difficult. So, let's look at it. So monkeypox was first discovered in 1958 when two outbreaks of a pox-like disease occurred in colonies of monkeys kept for research. Hence the name monkeypox. The first human case of monkeypox was recover, recorded in 1917 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So let's look at the transmission. That's important. How would it, if we get it, how do we get it? Transmission of monkeypox virus occurs when a person comes into contact with the virus from an animal, human or materials contaminated with the virus. So materials as well, fomites too. The virus enters the body through broken skin, even if not visible. That means the microscopic or very tiny cracks in the skin, which could be because of dry skin, which I get a lot, then the virus can use that. Respiratory tract or the mucous membranes, eyes, nose, mouth. Animal to human transmission may occur by bite or scratch, bush meat preparation, direct contact with the body, fluids or lesion material, body fluids or lesion material. Lesion material is wherever there is injury, that will be called a lesion. And if there is some material oozing out of there, that would have it and that can make others sick such as through contaminated bedding. Human-to-human -human transmission is thought to occur primarily through large respiratory droplets. Respiratory droplets generally, so you know about that more than CDC. The reservoir host main disease carrier of monkeypox is still unknown, although African rodents are suspected to play a part in transmission. So the reservoir, just like with SARS-CoV-2, we say we don't know. The virus that causes monkeypox has only been recovered, isolated twice from an animal in nature. In the first instance, instance 1985, sorry, <clears throat> 1985, the virus was recovered from an apparently ill African rodent, rope squirrel in the equator region of the Democratic Republic of Congo. In the second, 2012, the virus was recovered from a dead infant, Mangabi, found in the Thal National Park. What I do not know is that if it is only isolated twice in the animals, has it been isolated in humans more often? Now, signs and symptoms. Fever, headache, muscle aches, backache, swollen lymph nodes, chills, exhaustion. <laughs> that's not good. Within one to three days, sometimes longer, after the appearance of fever, the patient develops a rash, often beginning on the face, then spreading to other parts of the body. Lesions progress through the following stages. Macules, papule, vesicle, pustule, scabs. So tiny lesion that would start becoming bigger and bigger, it will become a papule, then it will become a vesicle like a little bubble on the skin, 
then it will become a pustule it would start breaking down and then it would scab over that is it would heal the illness typically lasts for 2 to 4 weeks in africa monkeypox has been shown to cause death in as many as 1 in 10 persons who contracted the disease now prevention of course you can see uh, respiratory droplets avoid contact contaminated things can be the reason and so on so avoid contact with the animals that could harbor the virus avoid contact with any material isolate infected patients practice good hygiene use personal protective equipment treatment currently there is no proven treatment because the virus safe treatment for monkeypox virus infection for purposes of controlling a monkeypox outbreak in the us smallpox vaccine antivirals and vaccine immunoglobulins can be used i hope they do not come out and say everybody needs to have a smallpox vaccine now for clinicians this is the resources for them so that is the monkeypox <laughs> meeple art says or turtles what's going on with the elephants and turtles <laughs> so now how is everyone so verbal kent says do you think over use of hand sanitizers could cause physical ailment depends so for example what happened to me is my hands have become so dry with the continuous use and washing but i haven't seen them i hope good quality hand sanitizers they should not cause damage to the skin or the glands of various part of the skin Michelle says, "Would there be any mechanism for IVM and monkeypox?" I do not know. I'll have to look at their bindings. Good question. <laughs> Slam Aran says, "It's turtles all the way down." What's going on with the turtles? I know that Alquin makes turtles. Is he here? Alquin is here. <laughs> There is a turtle here. Look. there is a turtle with that little medical symbol robin says there is one case in massachusetts uh skyfrog says i hope there is no turtle pox yes and skyfrog how are you doing i hope you're doing good grain of sand is laughing at something Barbara says checking back in. Hey Barbara, how are you? <laughs> JH says it's in Canada and US now. Monkeypox, that's sad. T Hunter says I want to rewatch uh what the previous video. I hope it was useful. I am kind of upset with so many um organizations asking people to do thousands of dollars worth of labs without really having a good approach to that so i thought why not we actually understand 50% of the people dying worldwide are because of the chronic inflammatory diseases and i think half of 60% of us in the us have some sort of chronic inflammatory 60% So if two people are sitting next to each other one of them has it so right now there are 97 people half of us have some chronic inflammatory disease and that means this covid is only going to make it even worse so we have to really understand what inflammation is what are the main drivers of it and how do we handle it with food handle it with our habits hygiene and then what are the drugs uh slam says have this doctor been talk no but i read that we are now allowed to have more tests ramnik says i like your and everybody's company here and thank you very much we like to have you here as well robin says there are 36 cases abroad um 
Alquin <laughs> Alquin turtle stop car <laughs> car has to stop because the turtle is crossing <laughs> Skyfox says I'm doing good no Skyfox excellent good to know Lisbeth says you've done a lot of hard work today amazing lecture thank you you're very welcome although this is just one uh, after this, I want to complete. So we have reached up to the point that the blood vessels are now ready to bring the cells in and we are producing more cells and cells are now attaching to the blood vessels. So then the next thing is when they come in, what happens? And then how do we regulate them? How do we stop them? So naturally, so of course, if they are not stopped, then we end up with the chronic inflammation and then we need to use medicines. But what is a normal, natural process of finishing in inflammation. So these are a couple of more lectures, I think. Paul Borg says, more have the chronic inflammatory state than those who push the like button. 45, yes, 60% have it. <laughs> so <laughs> guys, or are those, only those are pushing the like button who do not have <laughs> chronic inflammation? So Kini says, I want to learn about my TNF alpha. Okay, we'll talk more. Robin says, will you continue the inflammation discussion over the next few days? Yes. So I wish that I never have to actually look at if people are liking the talks or not and just do the talks because these are necessary. What happens is sometimes when I do these talks sometimes these are not very much liked by majority and so the channel immediately starts going downwards so i then move from that topic to something else there is a vagus nerve related dysfunction series that is out waiting as well and this i think will continue Meeple Art says, that was an excellent talk on inflammation. Sorry, and to continue with our previous talk, this is why I'm trying that folks become part of Patreon or they they become subs, part of Substack or some. So there is an alternative way of supporting this work. So I don't have to kind of look at YouTube every day to say, um, would it be sufficient or not? So Meeple Art, that was an excellent talk on inflammation. I have always wondered what mechanisms are driving inflammation, inflammatory disease. Still unsure about the handling it though. Yes. So Meeple Art, um, once we understand the normal, then the abnormal, then we can figure out how to manage. And this is, I think almost all of us, majority of us are going to get it. The in, Some chronic inflammatory disease. We may actually still have it and not know. And so it is important to learn more about it. Alicia says, uh, do you know of any proven over-the-counter supplements? So of course, the things that would reduce reactive oxygen species, these would help. Those that would stabilize the cell membrane, so the cells do not become upset and start releasing things very fast, these would help as well. So there are known things that would reduce. But of course, they're not as powerful or they're not as precise. For example, if you just want tumor necrosis factor alpha, then there is nothing over the counter to say this would do it. Bob Chanel says, I hope our civilization doesn't end by a series of pandemic, each caused by the isolation created from the previous pandemic. Hopefully not. Wow, that is so sad. Meat in my teeth says, latest stats show that 88% of Americans have at least one marker of metabolic dysfunction. That's so sad. Hmm. 
Paul says, would iodine help with monkeypox pustules healing? It helps with healing with yes. Yes, it would provide that comfort for sure. So Adi says, is aging a process of inflammation? Not exactly. Inflammation accelerates the process of aging, plus inflammation causes tissue damage and they cannot sustain longer, but aging is a different process. So what happens at 60, we suddenly put a person in the most vulnerable bracket, we know it says. So we know that actually it's not the age. It's the comorbidities with the age, obesity, diabetes, cancers, so comorbidities. Otherwise, uh, there are people in advanced age, I manage their, uh, <laughs> their children who had more severe outcomes and the uh, father aged 70 years was fine. Old school says the sufferer hit the button on the vein. Thank you very much. Correct. Telomeres. Meeple Art says, if you use headings such as that, start from meat in my teeth, you may have a few more viewers for such topics. What was the uh, <laughs> meat in my teeth? Tell me again. I always like to see, figure out what is the clickbaity thing to do. And I have no idea how to do that. So Meeple Art says, um, chronic inflammatory disease, more from genes or food or epigenetics. So there is one category of chronic inflammatory diseases that is genetic genes related but that is not a wider spectrum of the diseases majority of the chronic inflammatory diseases nowadays are because of the processed foods and the incorrect foods and so on plus environmental factors Tina says we love all the talks thank you very much Dia says this is such an important topic and so confusing to many of us. You make it understandable. Thank you very much. My problem is that people say, hey, I, I have, my body is in the inflammatory state. So what does that mean? <laughs> so we need to understand that, number one. Number two, nowadays there are people who are calling me and saying, this particular doctors or group of doctors asked me to do this panel and that panel and I've spent thousands of dollars and did this and... So I wanted to make sure that we understand what is the value of these panels. These seems to be extraneous. Skyfrog says, speaking of aging, have you done a video on progeria? Not yet. <laughs> we should do. I want to discuss aging as well. Dr. Bean, I have been ill, so I have missed some talks. Sorry to hear that. I do check every day though, and I saw a talk on COVID effects endocrine system i cannot find it now is it still on youtube or did you move it uh should still be on the youtube i didn't move it unless they took it down Virginia. So Michelle says, I think the typical American diet promotes inflammation, eating fast food and highly processed food or what I call food in a box. Yes, and that's one of the things we discussed today that foods cooked in moist heat are usually they have less um, advanced glycation and products which are damaging and cause inflammation 
even cancers. Um, then vegetarian foods have less aged products. Then we also have this theory of uh, <clears throat> hygiene theory, right? Which says that those societies which are more clean, their immune system, people's immune system has less things to do. So it just attacks them whenever it wants or not whenever it wants. It kind of is more free. It has a lot of resources and it just directs them at an every single trigger and that causes issues. So many reasons for this. That is correct. Intermittent fasting helps. What else is happening? So Robin says, here's a good clickbait title. Metabolic syndrome as the main driver for chronic diseases. Nice. I think we should do clickbaity titles to attract more people. <laughs> Tina says, I'll take Luffy Pox over Monkey Pox anytime. Yes. Slam says, we accumulate mutations, that is correct, plus our telomeres start going down. But there is a lot of research now that will help reduce. So the people, younger children, probably many of the children who are being born nowadays, they will go above 120, 130 years of age, 150 years of age with health. <laughs> Skyfrog says, isn't plant-based meat products processed foods? Yes, so if they are in the plants, then yes, they are. I meant plants, the vegetables. <laughs> Barbara says, carnosine helps slow the telomere shortening, but it is very expensive. Lisbeth says, great art to tonight. Thank you very much. I have been actually sitting, doing this lecture, pre preparing since um, 10 or 11 in the morning. It is so funny that these lectures, which I feel are really important, I also feel that they should be done in a shorter period of time so that people can actually watch them. And so... I sit down earlier in the morning to say I should make sure it is not a lot of content and it is less. But the earlier I sit down, the longer the content is. But I sat down early today because I wanted to draw and make sure that I had enough time to draw. Alexander says, beautiful drawings in tonight's lecture. Thank you very much. This is what I wanted. Bay Aquarius, Aquarius says, I really was able to see the mechanism at play. Great illustrations. Thank you. Very this is what I wanted. That the mechanism gets conveyed. <laughs> Look at this. John says, here's a good clickbait title. Dr. Oz is looking for some metabolic syndrome words. What happened to Dr. Oz? Is he still neck to neck with the others? Vinod says, in physics, engineering, observation, or measurement affects the system being measured. Does the same principle apply in medicine, especially with the human being measured is when the human being measured is the feedback? Uh, so I think to an extent, yes. For example, the current trend in just asking for long COVID or vaccine injury, 
to measure this this panel and that panel and then i'm seeing people just continuously attacking that panel instead of the actual clinical outcome and wasting money and time and i think it affects the way they are managed as well i don't know i was bothered today today because of this why was i bo bothered uh, my niece called me and she said i did this panel i said <laughs> who asked you to do it anyways um she did the panel and then i said okay fine you did the panel then did the doctor say based on the panel what is the answer now and she said no but um the doctor said do it again so i can see the difference i said okay so if they do it again then what will they do and she said they didn't discuss it i was so mad i thought i should discuss it because if she is going through this and she is very much in contact with me and i can help her then how many other people are going to be going through this casey says i took lots of skin shots and plan to rewatch thank you <laughs> that correct vinod had a very quantum observation that is correct so rapamycin yes but i do not know which context because i've done it for normal medical <laughs> sky frog says heisenberg uncertainty principle basically only applies to wave particle duality but isn't that interesting <laughs> we know that i think that is not going to happen hopefully we'll all have lighter milder covid um but to to kind of become a little philosophical with you when i had covid i was doing the lectures i had covid i didn't even care until i believe it was rima who said you should at least test it and after testing and it was positive then i was like oh what happened and since then i was on a different wavelength Kini says, "Standing ovation for King Bean. Thank you very much." Adi Bean says, "Thank you for your level of dedication, time, and energy you put in all of your life. You are very welcome." Um, Meeple Art says, "Why do they have the panels? Then, if not going to use the information, so what I suspect is they have some sort of a justification like this." do the panels so we understand how intense is the problem and then based on that we'll decide what is the the drugs combination at the end of the day there is just one or two drugs <laughs> so panel really it should be clinical observation with the same drug protocol and be done why to make the patient run around and now the patient is just looking at vegf or looking at this and they're going all crazy to me it seems a little extraneous i think in some cases it may be necessary where there is some ex intense outcome and the patient is just not um manageable because of the refractory state meaning they're not responding then maybe doing this is very important Siddhartha says, when I take my mother to a doctor, they do every kind of scan and test and find nothing seems to be a business. Yes, plus in the US at least, we have become very used to doing tests because doctors are kind of, they don't want to use their clinical experience. I think one, they are not very much used to having a clinical experience anymore because of these, this algorithmic way of working that if you have this diagnosis, then here is your answer. so that thinking part is either turned off or not developed and so tests would then help diagnose which would then help them figure out which protocol to use and that is how it is happening 
Plus, I think there is a liability issue as well. So doctor would rather do a test, figure out what test says in the, di in the diagnosis and then manage according to that. Roller girl is here. Hello. Texas Max says plant treatments like glyphosate, how they mess you messes up in so many foods in US beans, wheat. Yeah, so plant treatments have their own issues. You are correct. Slam says, doctors hardly seem to use us. Yeah, so we have become, in the US when we are practicing, we have become less um, apt with these things because the need is reducing because of the methodology. M. Gregory says, any yoga poses to reduce inflammation, that should be a yoga Saraswati-like person's question. Uh, I think soon she would join us, so we'll ask this question from her. I am sure there is going to be something. I'm just reading the comments. So, um, so it looks like there are not much questions. So thank you very much. How about we stop for today and continue tomorrow? We will continue tomorrow with the inflammation. And I want to do, tomorrow I want to discuss what happens at the site of inflammation when these cells start arriving, when the armies land in the area. And then um, a more important thing that is not yet covered in two years by any of my talks is regulation of inflammation. So I would discuss that as the third talk. So thank you very much. And my usual discussion, like, subscribe and share. And there are links in the description to buy me coffees or PayPal's or Substacks or Patrons or Dr. Bean. Thank you. I would see you tomorrow.